Hi everyone and welcome if you're new here. My name's Tiffany and I'm the International Witch. Today I'm going to take you along with me as I make a couple of crafts for my altar. Uh, the first one's just going to be me painting some candles with some gouache acrylic paint. And before you ask, yes, acrylic paint is absolutely okay to paint a candle with as long as you're not dipping the entire candle in acrylic paint. And also avoid where the wick comes out because you don't want the acrylic paint to burn in the wick because that's what releases the fumes. But as long as you're painting on the side of the candle, that's perfectly fine. And also I'm only using small amounts, so always safety first. And if you're thinking about doing this, um, don't use oil paint because oil is very flammable, so it must be water-based. And I saw a couple of these candles on Etsy, and I think they're absolutely gorgeous, and I would love to support small artists, but unfortunately, candles don't make it here to Italy. <laughs> they either melt or break. I have never been able to get any candles here. So this is one of those instances where I'm just going to make it myself. This poor little candle, the very first one I do, I call my test candle and you'll see at the end, it definitely looks different than the other two candles because I learned as I went along and I'm okay with that. Learning is an experience and it's for me and for my altar. I'm not selling these, so it's okay just to have fun. I had so much fun doing these and I think they came out so cute that I actually plan on doing a series of them, one set for each of the holidays, and I cannot wait. I'm thinking about maybe doing watermelons or lemons for the summer because, well, lemons, I'm in Italy. Which, strange thing, here's something you probably didn't know. Lemon trees actually can't grow here, they're too temperamental. It's too cold or too windy or too hot and they die. So all the lemons that you see are actually grafted trees from orange trees, which means as an orange tree is growing, they cut off the branches and attach cut pieces from a lemon tree. And that's how they get lemon trees to grow here, which I find fascinating. I didn't know that until I took a tour of a limoncello factory and they actually showed the process. Sorry, I'm getting distracted chatting. I think this is just gonna be a chatting video because I'm kind of in the mood. It's been cloudy and dark, so I've got four wall syndrome and you guys are here and I'm gonna talk to you, so yay. <laughs> I wanna use these candles for my springtime altars. So like Imbolc, Ostara, Beltana. So I kept the colors really light on this and I think it came out really cute. I thought about going back and adding like blue and pink ribbons, but then I thought I was overcomplicating it and I just kept it the way it was. What do you think? Should I go back and add more? I'm just going back and forth on it. And here's my finished springtime candles. As you can see, the first one I did, the stripes go the opposite direction and it's, the leaves are a little different, but I still think they're a cute set. I know it looks like you're hopping in the middle of something that I've already started, but this is one of those situations where I sat down and started creating and I wasn't really sure exactly what I was creating. I just felt the urge to do something. So I started out by making a wire form for her. I have no clue what gauge this is, but uh, it's a thick boy. So I made a, a wire form. And as you can see, you can kind of still see that uh, some of it's showing and that's fine. This is just the base layer. And what I mean by the base layer is I plan on using um, some paper clay, but this stuff gets kind of expensive. So what I like to do first is I use a homemade version of paper clay and it's just made out of old egg cartons as my base, which gives it its green color. Um, on this layer, I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just trying to build up the form and get it generally how I want it to look because I can go over it with this expensive stuff and make it look really pretty. This is just filling up the space. 
I plan on her holding a candle. So I made this base piece out of polymer clay because polymer clay can hold up to higher temperature heat than uh, the paper clay can. Although still I'm going to use the metal base that the candle comes in just for safety reasons. But anytime you're working with heat, I would always recommend choosing a material that will hold up to heat. Honestly, this happens way more than I'd like to admit. I'll get started on something, like when creativity hits me, I just get up and start making something. And then I'll get to a point where I'm like, oh shit, I probably should have shared this. So, sorry about that. Lately, I've fallen down the YouTube rabbit hole of these aesthetically pleasing videos. And I was watching a couple and I'm like, you know what, I should probably do that in my videos. It'll make it so much more interesting. But the more I watch them, the more I realize they're so fake. Like you'll see this great shot of a woman walking down the hallway and she passes through a doorway and then the camera pans to when she makes it to the end of the hallway. Just for that shot alone, she had to have stopped and refilmed three separate times of her walking down the hallway. And that is just so fake and I don't want that. I want honesty. I want it to feel like a friend is sitting down next to me watching me do things and joining in. And that's it. You'll see me spraying a lot. And the reason why I do this is because this paper clay tends to dry very fast and I want to get the entire skirt on and be able to smooth it before it dries. So to give me a little bit more time, I wet both the paper clay and the base that I'm going to be putting it on and uh, hopefully that gives me some, some more wiggle room. If you're looking for a recipe for homemade paper clay, there are so many out there on YouTube. I would just suggest Googling it. It is so much cheaper to make it at home and make it yourself than it is to buy it. Although yes, it is quite messy to make, but it's worth it, I promise. Now, before I cover this up, I want to take a moment also to explain another reason why I like using a base layer and then covering it with the good stuff is because paper clay, especially whenever you have to use a lot of it, tends to crack. And I allowed this to crack naturally because now I can cover this up and there's less chance of it to crack because the, the shape is already there. The reason why I'm making this figurine is because I've always felt disconnected from the goddess figurines that you can find at New Age spiritualist shops. And mostly that's because it she's always shown as a mother pregnant. And I am not a mother. I don't want to be a mother, you know, hands down to all those people who are good for you. But it's just not who I am. I don't have motherly instincts. So I've always been very frustrated with the figurines that represent this time in my life always being pregnant and I did not feel close to that. So recently I've come to more of a awakening that pregnancy does not always mean a baby. Sometimes it's just a creativity burst. So this female that I'm creating, she's not going to be pregnant, but she's holding the fire of creativity. I wanted to show that in a way that felt more me. This is one of the main reasons why I always advocate for people to make their own items instead of purchasing them, because you can make something that represents you as a person, as a witch, and I think that is much more powerful and much more connected to the earth and to your spirits than if you just bought something. I understand there's people out there that don't think that they are creative enough to make something, but just like I'm showing you here, my doll is not going to be perfect, but she's perfect for me. Don't go into creation and art as trying to be perfect because nobody's perfect. It's not going to be a true reflection of you if it's perfect. Just do what feels right. Even if it's just making a little coin out of clay, anything you make and you put your heart and soul into is going to have that energy. Now, I'm not too worried about making her perfect. I'm not selling her. She's just going to be on my altar. So 
to me, she's perfect for me. But if you were more perfectionist, I could see, you know, going in and trying to smooth out all the wrinkles, but I actually kind of like the wrinkles because it makes it feel more handmade. Like, you know I didn't buy this, I made this, and that makes me happy, so. Sorry for going off on a tangent, but I just think it's really important for people, especially beginner witches, to realize that you don't have to spend a lot of money. There's so much over-consumerism going on in the witchcraft community right now, and I get it, everyone's got something to sell. But honestly, the strongest things on earth is what you make with your own two hands and put your intention into. I know I can be such a magpie sometimes if I go into a store and I get distracted. It's like, ooh, shiny, I must have. But it's not necessary. They're great to have if you're in a position where you can buy them and you want them and they bring you joy, then so be it. But don't feel like you need it to be a witch because you don't. Yes, I know the back of her head is flat and that is on purpose. I plan on giving her hair so I didn't want to waste clay on an area that wouldn't be seen. Even though I'm spending all this time smoothing it out and trying to make it look pretty, but it is going to be covered. And here comes the messiest part. I understand that you could probably use one piece of clay to make the hair, but I really wanted the look of individual strands without as much work. So I just used a whole bunch of yarn and I'm gonna uh, dip it in like a paper mache goop and that's gonna become the hair. I think another thing that has inspired me to make this little flame bearer is that I've been called to work with the energy of Hestia a lot lately. Now I don't believe in gods or goddesses, I strictly work with ancestral energy, but I do like the archetypes. I think it is something to look into if you're wanting to learn more or bring more into your life, and that's what I'm feeling from Hestia. I'm, I'm feeling that need to make home more of a priority and make my home more of a sanctuary. So I think the idea of adding a little flame bearer would be really cute right now. But no, she does not have to be a Vesta virgin. Girl, go get you some. We're all about sex positivity here. After I put all of the yarn down, I'm gonna go back over it with that paper mache mixture because when I move to the States, I want this little lady to move with me. So things often wind up getting broke in shipping Hopefully I can get this girl's hair so strong, it's going to be like walking out of a hair salon in the 90s full of Aquanet. I don't want a single hair to move out of place. So I have a big forehead, and unfortunately I realized I also gave my girl a big forehead. And I would not wish that on anyone, so I come back by and give her some bangs. Here I'm adding her facial features, and let me just go ahead and tell you right now, I feel so bad for what I did to this poor, poor, poor girl. Like I gave her duck lips and a big nose and a huge face, but she's my little walking disaster. So <laughs> please don't think any less of her for those lips. Let's just say they were divinely inspired, not collagen inspired. Now I'm going over it with a little bit of white gesso, just so that whenever I go to put actual color on it, I don't want it soaking into the clay or the clay absorbing it any. I want it to be as solid and opaque as possible. And yes, I am going over her hair. If you wanted to use yarn and have it be the exact color of the hair that you want, then that's perfectly fine. But like I said, 
I need this stuff to last. So I go over it with gesso just to make it stronger. And next I'm going over with a dark brown. If you're asking why I'm doing this, it's because whenever I go to put paint on here, you're more likely to see if I miss a spot with the white than you are the dark brown. If I miss a spot and the dark brown shows through, it'll just look like shadowing and that makes the paint job easier for me. I know I don't film it, but just so you know, I'm doing two coats on everything. For her colors, I'm trying to keep very natural browns, yellows, that kind of thing. Originally, I had planned on just doing a Norse style apron dress, which is kind of my go-to, but then I was inspired by this beautiful goddess. Look at how beautiful she is. So I have modified the design of my dress towards more of a Scandinavian folk art look, but I am bringing in some trimmings to give the appearance of that fur trimmed jacket that she's wearing. I am also bringing in the tiered layer look of her dress, but I want to do individual sections on her dress. Like I want to have one that's flowers and one that's striped and one that's lace so that you can tell that there are different layers. When you're working with something like this that's flat, it's important to think of different ways of bringing in dimension and showing that there is different layers of fabric on her dress might help her look a little bit more realistic than if I had just left it the flat green. Painting is always my favorite part when you're finishing up a project because it goes from being just this blank slate to suddenly feeling more alive. It's like this is the part that you can see everything coming together. For the flower section of her skirt, I went onto Pinterest and looked up some folk art flowers. If you're ever unsure what to paint, I would highly suggest looking up folk art because it's very simplistic, but often very impactful. They used a lot of bright colors back in the day and it just looks very homemade and natural that it always works. <laughs> just put it that way, it always works. One of the tricks that I learned in art school is if you really want someone to say, wow, keep going. And what I mean by that is when you think you're done, keep going. If you keep adding stripes, if you keep adding dots, if you keep adding flowers, the more busy something is, it could be super simple. You can just put a thousand squares on something, but someone will say, wow, and it always works. So you'll see here, I'm just putting a ton of flowers. I'm just doing stripes in a single color, but overall the impact looks like I took a long time to do this. And that's a very simple trick. If you're trying to figure out what to do at home and you don't think that you have, you know, enough creativity, just do a bunch of stripes. Just do some simple flowers. If you keep going, keep adding, it always winds up looking like perfect art. 
this is the layer that I want to look like lace. And to give it that look, I'm just making a super simple scalloped edge out of dots and just filling it in with a bunch of dots. But when you stand away, it looks like intricate lace without actually doing a lot of work. So in my Bujo for March video, I discuss how I now have tendonitis and capsulitis in my left shoulder. It's getting a little better, so I'm able to take the sling off sometimes, but I'm still having to go through therapy and still being kind of iffy with it, so I'm going to be slow producing videos. Although I am hoping that the shoulder holds out because the week of Ostara, I'm actually going to be visiting London and I'm going to Stonehenge on the spring equinox. How cool is that? I've always wanted to do it. This year, I just got really lucky and the stars aligned. So anytime an opportunity like this comes up, I jump on it. Like I only have one life and I am going to jump at any travel opportunity I get. Unfortunately, my tour to Stonehenge doesn't start until around 11 a.m., which means that I won't be there for the sunrise. And that's the big draw, you know, is the sunrise and sunsets perfectly align in Stonehenge on the equinoxes and the solstices. But I am just happy that I'm going to be there and I am going to be able to see it. My husband and I are currently looking up different restaurants and places that we want to go. So for anyone who has been or lives in England, if, uh, specifically London, if there's anywhere that you love to eat or that you think I should see, please put it in the comments below because I am currently making our schedule and that would be super helpful. I wish I hadn't put the orange right next to the peach because they're so close in color, you can't really tell the difference. I hate rainy season. No matter what country I've ever been in, I hate rainy season. I hated it in Washington, D.C., and I hate it here in Naples. Naples doesn't have winter like we think of, like there's no snow, the leaves don't even die here, but they have rainy season. And just a few minutes ago, I looked out the window and it was raining and I'm like, oh no, I need to take my dog for a walk. So I got up, got dressed, got the umbrella, got my dog all suited up. We ran outside. She did her business all in the rain, came back in. And the moment we walked back in through the doors, it stopped raining. <laughs> like right now I'm looking out and the sun is shining. It is so all over the place, up and down, that you never know what the weather is going to be like. And here I am trying to put the face on this little lady. And once again, I am so sorry, my dear. I am not very good with faces, but I promise you I will give you very beautiful long lashes. See, they kind of make up for the mouth, right? And here is where I really start adding the dots. More dots, more dots! Now I am adding some gold highlights to her hair. I don't want her to be blonde, but I do want her to look like she's been kissed by the sun. I need to look into getting a new desk. You can definitely tell this one looks messy and it has been through the ringer. 
I tend to be quite hard on my crafting tables just because the amount of glue and paint and things that I get on it. So maybe I should look into getting a table with like a glass top on it. I'm not really sure. Then again, if I get something with glass on it, then that's going to be very reflective, which is going to make it hard to film on. Ugh, there's so many pros and cons no matter what I buy. I know one thing's for sure, and that is I'm definitely not buying from Ikea. Their pricing has gone up so expensive. Like, did you see all the videos where people have gotten out their Ikea catalogs from years past? And just the, the prices of things has like tripled and quadrupled. There's some speculation that that's why Ikea has stopped doing the catalogs because they don't want you to go back and be able to see that they're gouging you. Like when we bought our Hymnes entertainment unit, I think we spent maybe $500, but now that exact same unit, I priced it out, is over $800. Like it has gotten so expensive that it's not really the frugal thing to buy anymore. When I gave her the fur trimmed coat, I didn't realize that now it looks like her arms and her face are two different colors. Like you can't tell that that's supposed to be a shirt. So I'm going through and I'm adding white dots. And it's actually kind of looks like a fawn now that I'm looking at it. I promise you no animals were harmed in the making of her clothing. And now to attach the little pedestal for her candle. Since I added the little fur trim to her jacket, I'm gonna be super careful when I'm burning this candle. She will not be left unattended. And here's the final look at my little torch bearer to go on my altar. If you loved this video, make sure to hit the like or subscribe button so you can see more. And leave me a comment below saying what your favorite project was. I hope to see you here again. Love you. Bye.